In today's video, we will take a look at Xamarin Forms Shell. If you are new to the channel, consider subscribing. Let's get into it. A big part of app development is organizing views and the navigation between them. There are three popular ways to structure an application. The single view application, the tab-based application, and the flyout application. Before Xamarin Form 4, you create each type of this application using a project template provided by Visual Studio. Xamarin Forms Shell lets you set the application structure in one single location. Plus, the shell provides you with a set of APIs to manage navigation between your views. If you start a new project, you can create a shell application with the template from Visual Studio. For this tutorial, I'm going to introduce the shell into an existing application. At the moment I'm recording this, there is no template item for adding a shell component in a solution. I'm going to use a content page template. I call it App Shell. App Shell should inherit from the shell class. The root element in the Xemo should also be a shell object. App Shell will be the entry point of the application. In app.xemol.cs, I assign an instance of App Shell to the main page. We are ready to start working with the shell. Let's create a single view application. In app shell.xemo, I had a tab bar object. Tab bar as a tab object as a child. Within tab, I had a shell content object and I set its content to a content page name invoice page. Let's add a title and an icon to the tab object. Let's run the solution. We have a single view application. I'm going to show another view of the application. I had a new tab inside the tab bar object. I had a shell content object and set its content to a page called client page. I set the title and the icon on the tab object. You can see that the app has changed. Now we have an app with bottom tabs. Let's say I need another view for my invoice category. In the first tab, I had a new shell content object with a page called personal invoice page as a child. I give the shell content a title, business for the first and personal for the second. Let's check in the simulator. The two pages are displayed in the top bar inside the first tab. Nice. You can change the appearance of a tab through shell attached properties. For instance, we can change the background of the tab and also the color of the title in the tab. Before moving further, let's talk about page initialization. Let's add breakpoints inside the constructor of the page represented in the shell. I run the app. You can see that I am hitting all the breakpoints. This shows that all the pages, even the ones that are not visible, are created when we launch the application. How can we fix that? I'm going to remove all content page inside tab object. I use the content template property of the shell content. To each content template, I assign a content page. Let's run the app again. This time, you can see that only pages from the active tab are created. The page from the other tab are created when the tab become active. Now let's create a flyout application. Flyout is the menu that is accessible by clicking on the hamburger icon or by swiping from the side of the screen. Let's remove the tab bar object. I replace each tab object with a flyout item object. You can see that I have an hamburger icon that I can click on to access a side menu. 
The flyer can be customized. I can change the background color by setting the appropriate property on the shell object. The flyout can have a header. I use the flyout header template attached property. I give it a data template. Inside the data template, I add a grid as a root layout. The grid has a label with a text property set to invoice app. I make sure the text is centered in the grid. Let's run the app. We can see the header in the flyout. In addition to flyout item, you can add menu items to the flyout. Let's add a menu item object with text set to settings and icon image source set to a setting icon image. I add a second menu item object with text set to help and icon image source set to an help icon image. I run the app. Below the flyout items, you can see the menu items. The menu item has the ability to respond to command. Let's set a command on the menu item. In the code behind, I create a command called help command. This command will allow us to open a page in the browser. I use the browser object from Xamarin Essential. I pass the URI to the open async method. In order for the binding to work, I set the binding context to the class itself. Let's run the app. If I click on the help menu item, a browser is open with the specified URI. The shell comes with a set of APIs that ease navigation between your pages. Let's see an example. I have a settings menu item in the flyout. I had a setting command. I will use that command to navigate to the settings page. In the command implementation, I use the go to async method on the shell object and I pass the name of the setting page. Let's run the app. When I click on the setting menu, oh, I have an exception. The exception states that shell is unable to figure out the route to setting page. In order to use navigation, all the routes that are not represented in the shell hierarchy need to be registered in the application. Let's fix that. In app shell's constructor, I call the register route method on the routing object and I pass the name of the setting page and its type as argument. If I run the app again, this time by clicking on the settings menu, I'm able to see the settings page. The way a page looks in the shell can be configured on the page itself. Let's hide the bottom tab when the settings page is displayed. I use the tab bar is visible attached property on the content page. If I run the app, you can see the tab bar is not displayed anymore. Let's register a new route for a page called new client page. As the name implies, this is the page we are going to navigate to when clicking the new button in client page. In the client view model, I have a add client command bound to the button. I use the go to async method on the current instance of the shell to navigate to the new client page. Let's check the result in the simulator. The navigation is working. Let's display the new client page as a model window in the shell. I use the presentation mode attached property and set it to model animated. Let's check the result. The page is loaded as a model. Nice. Let's see another use case of navigation, navigating back. In the new client page, I have a cancel button. I create a command that will be bound to the button. I use the go to async method on the current instance of the shell and I pass double dot as argument. 
let's check in the simulator. When I click cancel, I go back to the client page. Let's see another use case of navigation. This time I will navigate to a detailed page and paste data as a query parameter in the URI. In the client detail view model, I add a new property named client name. This property represents the query parameter. When client name is set, I can load the detail through the load client method. In order to receive data, I need to decorate my class with the query property attribute. The first argument specifies the name of the property that will receive the data. In this case, it's client name. The second argument specifies the query parameter ID. Let's name it client name as well. I go back to the client view model. The view model has the on client selected method, which handles the selection of a client from the list. I use the go to async method. In the URI, I pass the client name as a query parameter. Let's run the project. When I select a client, I get an error. There is an issue with the URI. The detail page is not registered as a route in the application. Let's fix that. I run the project again. I select the client. The detail page appears, but no data. Let's put a couple of breakpoints. Okay, I see. When the parameter is passed in the URI, it is encoded. The solution is to decode the URI. I'm going to use the URL decode method from the HTTP utility class. If I run the project again, I click on the client. This time I have the detail. That's how you paste data when navigating. Xamarin Forms Shell has search capabilities built in. Let's say we want to have a search bar in the list of our clients. I start by adding a new class called Client Search Handler. This class must inherit from the Search Handler class. Let's start by overriding the onQueryChange method, which contains the current search query. Here, I will update the item source property, which holds search result. If the new value is null or has white space, the item source will be null. Otherwise, I will query the client store for a matching client's name. I also need to override the onItemSelected method. This method is executed when we select a result in the search result. With the selected item, I will use the goToAsync method on the shell to navigate to client page. Once the search handler is created, we need to consume it. I go to the client page. I use the search handler attached property. This property has a single child, which is the client search handler created earlier. I set some properties on the search handler. Placeholder is the text to display when the search box is empty. Shows results indicated where the search results should be expected in the suggestion area on text entry. Display member name is the path of the property that display for each item of data. Let's try out. Looks like selecting an item in the search result doesn't send us to the detail page. After some research, it seems like there is a bug here. The workaround is to add a delay before navigating. If I try again, this time it's working. That's all for today. If you want to learn more about the shell, the Microsoft Docs cover the subject in more depth. If you like the video, hit the like button and subscribe. 
See you next time.